I mean, first of all, if, if, it don't take a rocket scientist to see that. How are you going to pick a man with a drug problem and put him in a maximum state prison, which is called Clinton? Everybody in Clinton got 20 years, 25 years, 10, at least 10 and better. It's like if he would have had a real good lawyer to really show what this man was really going through, it's like he need help. That's all he ever needed. So then they put him in a maximum security, you know, in Clinton where he was scared to death. And I was always writing letters. I was writing letters, you know, I'm um, saying if anything happened to my husband, you know, I'm suing, I'm people trying to kill him, you know, they, they hurting him in there. I mean, $100 worth of cocaine in his car is worth going to a max prison, but they put him in there to plant fear in him. They wanted him to commit suicide. So if they put him in there, because Dirty's never been to jail before in his life. He ain't, Dirty wasn't no, he played that role. Dirty wasn't no tough guy like that. That was sweet as shaman. You know what I'm saying? He was no tough guy like that. And they put him in there, and the things that he told me happened in there, I, I really believe him. They ain't telling all that. You know what I'm saying? How the CEOs beat him up so bad in there, you know, where nobody couldn't see him till he healed up, you know? So psychologically, what do you want that man to do? He's in a maximum security prison with no, everybody in there, it's killers and all that, and he feared for his life. You know he set himself on fire inside Clinton. His whole back, it, it was all burnt up. He, he actually set himself on fire to get out to go. That's how he got into the crazy house, because he set himself on fire. He was so afraid of jail, he had to get out of there. On May 2nd, 2003, the day after ODB's release from prison, I was privileged to be present at a welcome home dinner in his honor in Queens, New York. He was joined by a few close friends and family members, all there to show their love and support. I'm here for a special occasion, my brother right there. That's who I'm here for, Mr. Mr. Dirk McGurk. I'm here for Mr. Dirk McGurk. I'm happy Mr. Dirk McGurk home. <laughs> he shot the world. He gonna shock him again. He the greatest. You know the Muhammad Ali story, the Kathy Clay story. You about to relive it all over again. Cause I'm rolling with the greatest, man. And he got the greatest crew. He, I'm telling, yo, I ain't gotta say no more. Y'all gonna see, right? Tell him again. Yes, whatever he says. That's right, he the greatest. <laughs> After years of battling with his demons, ODB seemed finally ready for a comeback. Remind me of that. He. That's All right? Remember what I just said. He. Pull out your He. Pull out your burning. He. Pull out your burning. Calm that down, boy. Huh? I'm listening to uh, my new single. It'll be out next week. All right. Definitely. So, yo, let's talk a little bit. It's been a minute since we kicked it in this. Yeah, man. Um, just happy to be out of that hellhole hotel, man. You know what I'm saying? And, um, um, you know, man, just, I'm just doing my thing, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, we be in that in a second, man. Yeah. Let the Calypso play. Talk a little bit about the, the, the Rockefeller situation. It's on, it's hot, it's popping. Rockefeller, you know what time it is. We get ill, me and Damon Dash. You know the squad we got. What? What? Still Wu Tang forever. What? ODB's release from prison brought a lot of anticipation, especially from Damon Dash and Rockefeller Records, who signed him to an astonishing $1 million deal. With no time given to readjust to being a free man again, ODB was already facing the pressures of being a rap superstar. When he got released and I saw him on camera, I'm like, yo, he needs some private time to really get his life together. Then if he choose, he want to come back to the music, let that happen. But it was like at that time, I felt like, yo, old Dirty Bastard needs time to get his, his mind together for all that to be on camera and cats want to make a TV show out of it. I, I wasn't feeling it. All right, I want to toast to my, my brother. I'm, I'm happy that he's out, and uh, there'll be many more successes on the way. Rockefeller and the world, man. Brooklyn Zoo. Brooklyn yeah. Zoo, represent. Woo! Let's get this going, I found out. I was on the phone talking to somebody. I don't know if it was Papa Wu. I said, yo, God, you coming to the, to the press conference? 
Mariah Carey and all of them is here and this and that. So a press conference. The plan is to bring Dirty home, detox him, get him in the gym, get him in, get him in shape, get him in vitamins, get him back onto being out in the world, keep his diet going, you know, get him fit for society. No, oh God, we got him right here now. We may do this deal with Rockefeller. I ain't saying this to be rude, freedom of law, Papa Wu, but when the f is y'all gonna tell me that? We've been waiting a long time for Dirty to come home. Dirty's home, everything fell in place. We got the clothesline, we got the deal with Rockefeller. So we got we got a book, and we got the movies too, Warriors. So this is it, that's it, that's it, that's it. What were you feeling yesterday when? Oh my gosh, when I got there, I knew the surprise, so it really was a surprise to me. But uh, that was Mariah Carey. So it was so wonderful. He was he was overjoyed. He looked, he said, oh, wow. She was there for him, you know, and she stayed the whole time with him. It's wonderful, really wonderful. And David Dash, nobody could be any better than him. He just, he did anything he needs, anything he wants. He's got the limit. I love that. I was disappointed that Dirty held that back for me. I was disappointed that my Aunt Cherry held that back for me. I wasn't angry at them. I loved them unconditionally. But it really f***ed me up when Dame Dash played that move on us. You know, I felt like Dame Dash could have called me. I felt he could have at least reached out to us prior to all this he set up. I thought that was the most crookedest thing any man can do in business. But I didn't hold it against Dame Dash. I just felt that Dame Dash had reached a point in his career that he had lost the insight of God and morals. With that kind of move, you was destined to fail. Because you're going against the rules of engagement. Even a country at war with each other first sits down and negotiate before they drop bombs on each other. ODB's life as a fugitive and a prisoner was now behind him. Everyone was waiting to see him rise back to the top. It's been a long way. We're happy to be today because not only because it's health, he looks good, and not only that we're going to be, see, that would be nice. in the past you didn't see us so much, you know what I'm saying? So now we're going to be forcing right? We're going to be there for him. Everywhere he goes, not everywhere he goes, but we're going to be behind him. Yeah, we're going to make sure that he knows that the family's behind him and they will always be there for him. Keep him positive, motivated. Even though everyone came to see ODB that day, much of the attention was on Miss Caroline. She was ODB's mom's best friend. She was shot in the head with a stray bullet on her way home from church one day. She survived and learned to walk all over again. Just her being there was a miracle. One of the last images that I have of ODB in the dinner that day was seeing him walk Miss Caroline back to her car. This will be the last time I'll see him alive. He died several months later, just two days before his 36th birthday.